mess. Hi witches, welcome back to my channel. It is me, your local chaotic witch aunt. And today we are talking about protection from the evil eye. What? So we're kind of starting off this video talking about what the evil eye is and what it means. A lot of people come to me and they're like, I thought the evil eye was an amulet. Um, but no, the evil eye is based off of a belief um, around people throwing jealousy or envy or put, putting bad luck on you when they look at you in envy or jealousy. There are a lot of different names for it, specifically in Italian folk magic, balocchio, it just translates to bad eye. We also have terms like invidia, envy, and fascinare or fas fas fascina fa fascination. Um, because I am an Italian folk practitioner. I am primarily going to be talking about the function of malocchio um, in Italian folk magic as well as protecting yourself from the evil eye in Italian folk magic. However, the concept of the evil eye is not just a go away. Go lay down. It's not just a practice in Italian folk magic. It is a practice that it's a cross-cultural belief. It is found into so many different places over the world, all over the world, from Turkey to Greece to uh, regions in the U.S. It, you know, it's not something that is closed to Italian American folk magic. Um, things like the evil eye cures we do, or the way we take care of it can be closed, but all the things that I am sharing with you are things that you can do um, either as a folk practitioner or just as a witch in general. I've noticed recently, I wanted to make this video because there's a misconception that the Nazar charm, which is like a little blue thing, um, is the evil eye, but it's actually one of many cross-cultural charms that is used to ward it off. And throughout history, a lot of different things have been associated or attributed to being caused by malocchio um, or the evil eye, such as St. Anthony's fire, um, obsessive ideas. In the book Power and Magic in Italy, there is a man who looks at a breastfeeding woman with envy, and then his breasts fill up, and he had to go and he had to go back to the woman whose breast milk dried up, um, and he performed a little charm slash ritual to give her back her milk. This idea of the evil eye taking something from someone is very typical. Um, in Italian and Italian American folk magic, the idea that you're looking at someone with envy trying to get something. You can also look at someone with just hatred and that will cause malocchio. Typically, it is not something that is done intentionally. That would be referenced as like dictatura or bad magic if you're intentionally casting the evil eye versus this practice is specifically going to be unintentional. Um, you're unintentionally looking at someone with a little bit of jealousy or envy and you can give them malocchio. So now we're gonna break it down into what are the signs that someone has put the evil eye on you or how does, what does it manifest as? Historically, a lot, a lot, a lot of different things have been attributed to malocchio. Like I said, St. Anthony's fire, also known as shingles, epilepsy, uh, loss of breast milk, um, sudden fever, uh, malaria, um, and we understand now in our kind of modern day and age that there are probably causes, there are causes for these things to happen that are not due to the evil eye. But that doesn't change the fact that the evil eye is heavily uh, recorded with like sickness and loss of opportunity. So I'm going to talk about an experience that a couple experiences I've had uh, where someone put my locchio on me that will help you understand how it functions in this context. Uh, one, one time I told someone about an event that I was really excited to go to. I was talking about um, how much I was looking forward to going that weekend. And right before that weekend, I came down with the flu really severely and missed the event. I also had a lot, I wasn't able to work, so I had a loss of income. And I had to push this event back a while. And that 
that was someone throwing malocchio on me. And typically, you know, I always go for if it's just you getting sick or getting a headache after you've stayed up for 24 hours, that's not malocchio, that's cause and effect. Um, however, if you have something happen out of nowhere, especially if you sh after you share something that you're like proud of or really excited for with someone, that could very often be Melocchio. Um, there's a book I would highly recommend by Agatha de Santis. It's called Melocchio, Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About the Evil Eye. It's a fantastic book and there are a few notes in here. There is no one single correct way to describe malocchio. There is no one single illness that can be exclusively attributed to malocchio. There is no distinctive method to protect oneself from it. And there is no singular, undeniable, proven way to cure the evil eye. The belief is based on an individual's experience, practice, and interpretation. This ambigu ambiguity, Migliore suggests, allows people to be creative in their use and practice of the belief really great quote that I think explains it very well. Um, and in this book, they talk about specifically Italian American protective rituals, one of which includes hiding little charms and amulets under the baby's clothes during a baptism. So the priest blesses them. Oftentimes this will be a gold corno, a gold crucifix, and a saint's photo wrapped in a sewn piece of cloth, all on a gold safety, safety pin. Malocchio, for me, another way that it happened is I was at a grocery store and I started getting incredibly uncomfortable and overwhelmed in the grocery store. I didn't know what was, I thought I was dehydrated. Um, I was really dizzy. I was feeling faint. It was very sudden because I knew I had to eat and then drink in water, drink water. Um, but out of nowhere, I'm feeling like my blood sugar is dropping. And as soon as I get out of the grocery store, the feeling goes away. That is kind of a direct, a very quick, someone sent me malocchio, I go home, I do my cure, and I'm good. Um, but something like uh, having a little bit of bad luck may not be malocchio, but having a little bad luck that comes with you are losing an opportunity to something that you were really excited about. You are losing income. You are possibly, um, you know, I, I once had someone put my lochio on my foot, on me, and I almost broke my toe. <laughs> and I wasn't able to dance for a week, and the person who gave it to me was at the dance class. Um, that's another example. Very often it has to do with the part of you that they want being taken away from you. Whether that is injury, you're sick, you're unable to perform in this opportunity, um, or you're just having bad luck. Um, I often find that when someone looks at you with envy towards a specific thing, let's say someone says, I really love your sweater, and there's a little bit of envy in there, um, if the malocchio hits, that sweater may suddenly get stained and you may not be able to replace it. Um, if the malocchio doesn't hit, Sometimes people say that, you know, your eye twitching is a sign you have malocchio. Your ear ringing is a sign you have malocchio. Uh, there are a lot of different ideas around what the immediate reaction to a person is after the evil eye. And that, once again, is going <laughs> to differ based on tradition. Um, but that's some examples of how malocchio kind of functions. Um, in Italian folk magic, the first thing we check for when someone's having bad luck, when something happens, is we check for the evil eye. We always start off with our evil eye diagnosis, um, which is going to vary based on region, practice, and family. The traditional one is water, olive oil, salt, and a secret prayer. Needless to say, I will not be sharing my malocchio cure <laughs> on the internet. Um, there are some renditions of malocchio cures and secret prayers uh, in this book, as well as uh, Italian Folk Magic by Rue's Kitchen Witchery, Italian Magic Secret Lives of Women by Karen Crisis, and The Things We Do, Ways of the Holy Benedette by Augustino Tomatorjo. Um, they have you know, versions, and when you look in anthropology sources or folkloric sources, you can find prayers that are typically used in different regions. Um, but it is very much something that 
a lot of our prayers are very heavily guarded. Uh, they are passed down at midnight on Christmas Eve, or they cannot be spoken out loud. They can't be written when the sun goes down. So it's not something that I ever plan on sharing, but I would love to share some open ways or some ways that in Italian folk magic, we protect ourselves from the evil eye, as well as some more general methods of protection against the evil eye. The first thing that I was always taught when I was growing up, don't brag. <laughs> My mom always said, don't brag. Uh, and I realized later that that's a product of like, when you brag to someone, they can be jealous of your, <laughs> they can be jealous of your success and put malocchio on you. So I grew up never bragging. Um, I don't share a lot of my projects uh, that have not come to completion or have not already been done very frequently. And that for me is another thing, move in silence. Um, those two are very much the biggest things I do to protect against the evil eyes. I don't share my information very frequently. I don't talk about projects that are not done. I do not try to like uh, go out of my way to tell someone that I, especially that I don't trust, something that hasn't been finished yet or an event or something I'm excited for. Will I tell my partner? Yes, because if he gives me the, if he gives me the evil eye, I can deal with it in a second. And what I mean by that? as so we break up. I'm kidding. That was a joke. Um, I'm, so there are people in my life that I always tell these projects to because I know from experience that they have never really given me my locchio or if they have looked at me in envy or jealous, jealousy, they always tell me, which is the best thing you can do. <laughs> they say, I'm really jealous of you right now. I'm like, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk it through. Um, when we talk about the evil eye, that is the biggest thing. The other way to ensure that you are not unintentionally giving someone evil eye is traditionally you will say a blessing after a compliment. So in Italian that's che Dio ti benedica, may God bless you. Or siate benedetti, may God bless you all, which is what I say at the end of every single YouTube video. Um, this is kind of a, of a gesture of good faith. Uh, it's how you will make sure and ensure that you're un not unintentionally giving someone evil eye. Um, if you are not comfortable saying something like that, you can also just after you talk to someone when you realize like you're like, oh, I was a little jealous. You, I, uh, you make a, uh, like a pff, pff, pff sound or you say, I wish more of that for you. Um, <laughs> those are the kind of Italian ways of doing it. Um, and for me, I will just, if I realize I've said something in jealousy, which I'm trying, I, I, because I believe in the evil eye, I'm very mindful of, I always just stop a moment, say a blessing for the person. Um, I try to like undo my action by blessing them. Um, Traditionally, que Dio te benedica, or saying God bless you, like, oh, you're so gorgeous, God bless you, is something you say. Um, this book also talks about like saying something's ugly <laughs> as a way of, as a manner of love, because it is so, malocchio and the belief from malocchio is so ingrained in Italian American folk magic. You go, oh, he's so ugly. And that's the best thing you can say, because he's ins they're ensuring that you cannot give them evil eye. Um, which is, crazy because my family, we do not compliment each other a lot. <laughs> we, we, compliments are far and in between. We usually get the, what are you doing? What is that? You know? And I think that to me has always been more of a sign of love than compliments. I don't want a compliment. I want you to tell me that I'm a stupid bitch. It's a joke. So, and, it, and uh, a few ways you can ward off the evil eye as well, other than not bragging, uh, is there are going to be amulets and charms that are specific to your tradition and specific to your uh, culture that you can wear. Um, every single folk magic is going to have a different way of protecting yourself against the evil eye, especially when it's very present in that um, in that practice. Uh, it, so in Italian American folk magic, we have things, uh, we have protective amulets like the corno, which is a cornicello, a little corn horn. Um, Manofigo, which is this on a charm. The mano cornuto, which is the devil's horns. Um, and these amulets are very typically uh, used as protective things, and they are typically passed down from Italian relatives. My corn though was given to me after my grandma passed away from my mother. Um, it's, in my family at least, very taboo to buy yourself a protective amulet. You do not do it. They have to be a gift, 
and they have to be given to you by someone. Um, that is for us a sign of good luck. It's bad luck to buy your own. <laughs> so you always wait for it to be up. You can be very clear that you want it. I've told my mom every Christmas for the past three Christmases, I want a Manofigo, I want a Manofigo, find me a Manofigo. And a Manofiga because it's feminine. Uh, and every single year she's like, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm trying to find you one. Um, so you, stop it. You can be so clear in saying you want that, but you cannot buy it for yourself. Um, I'm unsure if that idea comes in to play in other traditions. That for me has always been a very Italian thing. Um, there are other things like the St. Joseph statue to sell your house that you do not do. Um, so a few extra things other than our protective amulets is you make gestures. Um, if you feel like someone has given you the evil eye, you make the sign of Mano Cornuto and you kind of point at it, point it at the person in private, discreetly. Uh, my family always used to spit on the ground three times or they make that sound, they go pff, pff, pff. Evil eye gone. There are a few other things touching iron to avoid bad luck, so toca fera or toca fero. Um, you always, I always keep iron nails on me for this purpose. Um, and those are kind of the more like very quick you think someone has done it, throw something up <laughs> type of deal. Uh, there are protective measures that are more ingrained in Italian folk magic that I can't necessarily share. Things like brevi or abatini bags, which are charm bags that are made um, with a lot of protective ingredients to protect against the evil eye. Um, and those are typically pinned inside clothing. Different types of stones or uh, like coral and amber are traditionally worn to protect against malocchio. Uh, so you'll notice, not in this video, but whenever I go out, I'm wearing either amber or coral or I'm carrying it on me. Same with a brevi bag. I never leave home without it. <laughs> and that's just kind of the start of Italian folk magic and protection against malocchio. When we get more into the witchy side of things, there are definitely ways that you can deal with the evil eye. Apart from just moving in silence, having protections that are specific to you and your culture, uh, such as protective amulets that you always wear or protective earrings that you always wear is incredibly beneficial. When I tell you I leave this house with like six layers of protection, veil, earrings, necklace, other necklace, something in my pocket, bracelets. I do not ever leave the house. <laughs> with nothing on because for me that's like being vulnerable that's being open to things I also usually what I'll do is I know people will spray waters or wear oils for me there is an evil eye oil Ugh. by the death witch that we are recently we just had her on the podcast and that episode's coming out soon but by the death witch that i use religiously i will wear it religiously um i love this oil because and you know there are lots of people who make evil eye protection oil this is just the one that i go to as you can see like it's one of the only oils that i have that's almost gone which is insane um if you look at the rest of my oils there's a lot more in there. <laughs> so protection from evil eye can be anointing yourself with oil. Um, sometimes you can wear or like say prayers. You can have a saint medal on you. It's very traditional, like your favorite saint oh, or patron saint or a saint associated with your family and wearing that. I, tip, I like to bless my saint medals. It's always fun. Um, I will typically put something on the back of my neck as well, something like rue water, because rue is a very big herbal ally for me. Um, but depending on kind of your belief and how you approach it, uh, sometimes all you need is like a few amulets. I, when I tell you, I never told anyone anything and then as soon as I started going out in the world making friends again, I started getting evil eye left and right. Because it's always, and like Agatha de, Santa said, Agatha de Santa said, it oftentimes is unintentional. Um, they are unintentionally jealous of something you have. And it's not necessarily a reflection like this person's a bad person, um, but it is something to keep note. And so when you get malocchio from someone, you say, okay, 
I'm not saying that. I'm not telling anyone again. I'm not telling you again. I'm going to keep it in my circle. Um, being mindful of who you share information with. And I think the be biggest thing for me in believing in the evil eye and learning about it is not the spiritual protection. It's not the um, way that I protect myself when I leave the house. It's being mindful of who you share what you're passionate about with. It's being mindful of how you approach talking to people, how you compliment them. Are you complimenting them because you're jealous of them? Or are you complimenting them because it's genuine? I always say, I never say anything that I don't really mean. And that's true because if I don't want to give someone evil eye. I don't want to give someone malocchio. Um, the way we interact with the world and the way the world interacts with us is at the forefront of many folk magics. And this is just one way in which it's at the forefront of Italian folk magic. It's how is someone, how are you interacting with people? Are you jealous of them? Are you fueled and driven by jealousy and envy for others? Are you looking at people and seeing only what you want? Or are you genuinely happy for the people around you? And then when someone gives you like evil eye, you're like, oh, that's what you are, that's where you are right now. That's okay. I'm just not gonna share these things with you. Um, different cures, I'm not gonna be sharing the cure, but I did wanna share, these are some examples of a mano cornuto in Malocchio by Agatha de Santos. Um, in this book, Telling Folk Magic Secret Lives of Women, there are going to be different prayers, at least that I know. There's traditional diagnoses for il malocchio, including looking inside pillows and couch cushions to see if braids or knots have formed there. Um, seeing or sensing repeated images, impressions or impressions of the thought or, uh, or thoughts of the sender. Feeling a sense of alarm repeatedly. Finding an out of place object in your home or yard area. That for me is someone text you. Um, Receiving an email or letter or even a photo that is charged with energy such as anger or stalkerish or creepy vibes from the sender that makes you feel very scared. Uh, a laconomancia diagnosis, and those are secret prayers with combination of one of the following. Oil, wheat grain, salt, gold, rings, scissors, charcoal, matches or twigs, spoons, forks, knives, hair, depending on the village and tradition to both diagnose and cure. And now Jetadora is throwing the gaze and that's something that you do intentionally. Benji, Benji, go lay down. Jetadora is when you are intentionally throwing malocchio. Uh, and it's very much in Italian folk magic frowned upon. You do not do things like bad magic. You do not put an evil eye on someone intentionally. You do not do things that we would associate with that kind of harm on someone. And that's how I was raised because that's my, that's just the folk magic way. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't have access to those curses and know how to do them, especially in this day and age. We know like if you have to heal something like that, if you have to undo it, you know how it's done. I know a lot of different things than how to do them. Are you gonna see me doing it? Not particularly. Cause when I tell you fattore, Italian death curses go fucking hard, they go fucking hard. They are a lot. Um, so traditionally, this is what it would look like. A little eye and oil. Love it. Different formulas are gonna work different ways. Um, if you, like me, are a reconstructionist, you're gonna maybe creating your own prayer and feeding it power. Although my favorite prayers in here have to do with Santa Lucia and fennel. Um, and there are lots of different like defenses against the evil eye, uh, using salt, protection of the body using amulets and brevi, which is those bags, but salt. <laughs> Coarse salt is your best friend. It is why I clean my house with salt every week. I get all that bad shit out. Salt is the man, is the purifier. Salt is the mighty purifier. In the same way that we see garlic as tied to Archangel Michael as protection from the evil eye. Same with rue. Same with um, a few other herbs. We know these apotropaic charms and plants so well because there are spirits tied to them that we talk to. With fennel, we talk to Santa Lucia. Uh, with salt, that's just salt. Sale. Uh, some people even throw a small amount of salt on the animals they fear or experiencing El Malocchio. 
it's so funny. I do that sometimes, not really. Um, salt is traditional as a protective tool in Italian folk magic, as is garlic and its associations with Archangel Michael, as is uh, Angelica, because it's directly tied to Michael. Um, although Angelica is a little bit more like, that's something that I work with personally. Um, Rue is a protective herb. Uh, there are certain herbs in this practice called panacea or cure-all herbs. And those cure-all herbs are for malocchio, they are for worms, they are for protection, they are, they are for love, they are for purification. Some, and the three main ones are Rue, Verbena or Vervain, and um, Mallow. Marshmallow. There are other ones as well, um, and working with them is incredibly beneficial. You can carry them with you where you go, form a relationship with them, and it'll assist you in this way. Um, the other thing that I love to do is burn a black candle. Thank you, Dee Norman, the author of Burn Black Candle, who also talks a lot about malocchio and protection against malocchio. Um, Burn a black candle when you feel like someone has put evil eye on you because black absorbs negativity and it'll take care of it. My way is herbs, oils that I've made. Um, relationships with herbs really help me. Um, and being mindful of the way you interact with the world. Uh, if you are familiar with the evil eye in your tradition or practice, let me know in the comments. I want to hear all about it. All of the information I have given you is available in the books that I've listed down in the comments. Um, I am not sharing anything that was passed down to me by teachers that is personal to me, but I am sharing things that I know of um, that can help people who are looking into Italian American folk magic, looking into the evil eye, really connect with it. Um, and I will put that list down below. Start your journey. I'm here for it. I'm so excited for you. And forget, don't forget, que Dios te bendiga. May God bless you.